This is your USMNT Abroad midweek update from March 14th to March 17th of 2022. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tax Manager TV, and welcome to another episode of USMNT Abroad, where every Friday we update you on how the Yanks abroad over the midweek, and every Monday we update you on how the Yanks abroad over the week. And so, yes, next Monday, even though it's USMNT Camp Week, we will have a USMNT Abroad episode on Monday. Now look, little fun fact right here, our t-shirt, Burhalter Ball, has made it to ESPN. Yes, Herc Gomez did wear on the last Football Americas episode a show that I very much enjoy and highly recommend. So go check it out. And also Burhalter Ball t-shirts on the Tactical Manage TV store. Link is on the description. Now we do also have an announcement as we do have a brand new podcast called Tactical Yanks. As of now, it's on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. The podcast essentially is me and Pete. We will be bringing guests later on and we'll be talking about U.S. soccer, U.S. men's national team, European soccer, South American soccer, and much more. So yeah, go check out our podcast. Make sure to leave a review while you're at it. Hopefully a five-star review, just like you leave the like button here or dislike. Leave a five-star review. It really helps the podcast. Thank you very much. Let's play the intro. Let's start with the updates. All right, so let's start with the Americans that played in the Champions League this week, and that is Christian Pulisic and Timothy Weah, as Chelsea and Lille faced each other in the round of 16. On Wednesday, Pulisic started and played 74 minutes for Chelsea during their 2-1 win over Lille in the UEFA Champions League round of 16. Now, Chelsea won 4-1 on aggregate and has advanced to the quarterfinals, the current champions. Now, Timothy Weah started off on the bench for Lille and came in at the 58th minute for this match. Now, in regards to Christian Pulisic, for the first half, Pulisic played as a striker in a dual striker formation alongside Kai Havertz. It wasn't really a very good first half for Pulisic and Chelsea, every single player, but... Christian Pulisic managed to tie the game at the very last second of the first half. After a nice pass from Jorginho, Pulisic was able to hit a nice diagonal shot and equalize the game. And honestly, it was the goal that got Chelsea through. It was a goal that killed the momentum off Lille. They were going into halftime at home with a 1-0 lead after losing 2-0 away in England. So going to halftime with a 1-0 lead was key to get that momentum going. Maybe pull an upset in the second half. So that goal from Pulisic, despite the poor performance in the first half, was crucial and what, in my opinion, got Chelsea to the next round. The second half, Chelsea changed their front three. They changed their formation to have a front three after Mason Mount came in for Kovacic. Now, with the front three, Christian Pulisic played as a right winger, Kai Havertz as a false nine, and Mount as a left winger. They did interchange a little bit throughout the half, but most of the time, it's as I mentioned. So Christian Pulisic once again came in clutch in the UEFA Champions League knockout round. We saw that last season against Real Madrid, Porto, Atletico Madrid, and again this year he played both games against Lille, both games against Lille, he scored. Now how did Timothy Weah do? Weah played mostly as a left midfielder or winger during the offensive shape, but there's not much to talk about in his performance in regards to the offense. But on defense, I do have to point out that he has a lot of blame for Chelsea's second goal. His lack of awareness on the defensive end allowed Aspilicueta to get ahead of him off a cross from Mason Mount to score Chelsea's second goal and put the nail in the coffin. I know Weah's role is not to defend, but right there, it was poor positioning, lack of awareness. Now, to be fair, regardless of this goal, Leo was likely not going to go through, but I do have to point out Weah's mistake. Now, back to Christian Pulisic, he also got man at the match for this one. Yes, Christian Pulisic was the man at the match for this one. As for stats, Pulisic had one shot on target, 27 touches, 76.5% passing accuracy, won one out of three ground duels, lost all six of his aerial duels, and was fouled once. Now, Jonathan David was nowhere to be seen in this match, even though he did start and play for Lille, and some will even say he was the third best American in the field for this one. Okay, now we're going to go to the Americans in the Europa League, but before we do that, I do have to request you to hit the like button. I forgot to do it in the beginning of the video, but now I'm reminding you. All right, so now let's go to Serginho Dest from Barcelona. On Thursday, Sergino Des started and played 56 minutes for Barcelona during their 2-1 away win against Galatasaray in the Europa League. Now, Barcelona advances to the quarterfinal by winning 2-1 on aggregate after a 0-0 draw in the first leg in Camp Nou. Or I guess now it's called Spotify Camp Nou. Just like one day, I will be called Red Bull Tactical Manager. True story right there. 
Now, Des left the game with a leg injury on his left leg. Apparently, it's a hamstring injury, according to Xavi. Not good, and at the time of this recording, there's no update on how long it'll take for him to return. It has been confirmed that he won't be available for Barcelona during the weekend at El Clasico. The injury happens right when the U.S. men's national team roster comes out. And I'm recording this before the roster is out. So I'm assuming Serginho Dest won't make this final U.S. men's national team World Cup qualifying camp. It's an assumption. I hope this ages poorly, but at the time of the recording, I don't know. The roster is not out yet. But obviously, by the time you watch this, the roster will have been out on ESPN. As for the game, Sergino Des was doing fine defensively and tactically, showing how much he has improved in those aspects of the game under Xavi's influence. Right, everyone, quick update. I'm on the road today, as you can see. Uh, Sergino Dest, Barcelona actually confirmed he's out for a couple weeks, so he won't be in the U.S. men's national team camp. They expect him to be back after international break, but that's the update, all right? I recorded the video yesterday. Today I'm on the road, but I'm sending here the video. Dustin will add it. Ciao. The next American in Europa League is James Sands from Rangers in Scotland. On Thursday, Sands started off on the bench and came in at the 69th minute for Rangers during their 2-1 loss to Srivena in the Europa League. Despite the loss, Rangers will advance and have advanced as they won 4-2 on aggregate after winning the first leg in Scotland. Quick reminder, RB Leipzig is also in the Europa League. They didn't play this round because they're going to face Spartak Moscow. And Spartak Moscow was banned due to all Russian clubs being banned. So they advanced... They got a buy essentially to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. So RB Leipzig and Tyra Adams are still in the Europa League in the quarterfinals, just like Rangers and just like Barcelona. Next up are the Americans in the Europa Conference League, the third division of the Champions League. The first one is Conrad de la Fuente from Olympique Marseille. On Thursday, Conrad stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Olympique Marseille during their 2-1 win over Basel in the Europa Conference League. So they won 4-2 on aggregate and have advanced. But Conrad de la Fuente's minutes continue to tank. I mean, it's been zero quite often. So you can't really go lower than that. Next up is Richie Ledesma from PSV. On Thursday, Ledesma was available and stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for PSV during their 4-0 win over Copenhagen. Now, PSV has also advanced by winning 8-4 on aggregate. Yes, the first game was 4-4, and I kind of wish I had watched that game. Unfortunately, I did not. All right, so now we're done with the European competitions, essentially the Champions League, Europa League, Europa Conference League. Now we're going to go to the players that play domestic games. And we'll start with Giovanni Reina from Borussia Dortmund. On Wednesday, Reina started off on the bench and came in at the 69th minute for Dortmund during their 1-0 win over Mainz in Bundesliga. Why are all the Americans coming in at the 69th minute? A little bit odd, right? Now, this win somewhat revives Borussia Dortmund in the title race. I mean, Bayern Munich will probably still win Bundesliga, but now there is a chance. Reina came in to revive them. In terms of the game, Reina came in at the left wing and played there a lot. But Reina and Brent did switch up quite a bit, so Reina did play central at times. I would say probably 60% on the left wing and 40% of the time playing central. Now, Reyna was on corner duty, but it was when he was taking free kicks that he was at his best. First, he got Dortmund the goal with a beautiful assist off a free kick for Witzel to score the only goal of the match. At the 95th minute, Reyna almost scored off a direct free kick with a nice save from the Mainz goalkeeper. Reyna is fit and ready to go for the U.S. men's national team camp. Again, assuming he made it, because when I'm recording this, I haven't seen the roster yet. And he should be the United States' main set-piece taker. Look, Giovanni Reina got 30 minutes last weekend, 20 minutes this game, another full week of training, plus he will probably get minutes over the weekend. He should be fine and good to go to play many minutes for the U.S. men's national team this camp. Maybe not 270, obviously, but he should be good to play over 90 minutes throughout the three games. Now, the unfortunate moment was that we saw Giovanni Reina with a Flamengo jersey next to Hanier after the game. That, that was a major L from Giovanni Reina, but I guess nobody but he's perfect. Now, a quick word from our sponsor. Tired of having big tech collecting all your data and spy on you? Well, our sponsor might have the solution to that. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service offering fast connectivity, most servers, and next generation encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. Plus, you can use NordVPN on all your computer and devices no matter the operating system. With NordVPN's unlimited bandwidth, you never have to worry about a slow connection either. And plans start at under $4 per month. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal right now by going to nordvpn.com slash believe. That is believe as in B-L-E-A-V. 
Use the code for 70% off on your NordVPN plan plus an additional free month. It's also risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So again, thank you NordVPN for sponsoring the channel. Okay, you heard it from NordVPN. Let's keep going. Now let's go to Brendan Aronson from RB Salzburg. On Wednesday, Brendan Aronson started and played 120 minutes for RB Salzburg during their 1-1 draw with Wolfsburg for the Austrian Cup semifinals. I said 120 minutes because the game went to extra time and PKs, where Salzburg would win on penalty shootouts. Brendan Aronson took their fourth PK and converted it. Salzburg will face Ride on May 1st for the Cup final. Next up is Ethan Horvath from Nottingham Forest. On Wednesday, Horvath started, as always now, and went the full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest during their 3-1 win over Queen Park Rangers. If there were any doubters, now they should know. Horvath is the number one option for Nottingham Forest. They're also in the race for a spot for the championship playoffs. They're one point away from Queen Park Rangers, who they just defeated, by the way, and, are pl and they have one less game. And Queen Park Rangers is currently the last place team in the playoff qualification zone. So, yeah, I'm not saying they're going to make the Premier League, but they're definitely in the fight. And, I mean, if they made it, it'd be pretty cool to have a starting goalkeeper in the Premier League. I, I hope, right? Who's the last one we had? Probably Tim Howard. Now, Cameron Carter-Vickers from Celtic in Scotland. On Monday, CCV started and went the full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 3-0 win over Dundee United for the Scottish Cup quarterfinals. For this same match, Ian Hark started for Dundee United and unfortunately, he left the game during the first half with an injury. Now, Celtic are off to the semifinals where they will face their rivals, Rangers, Quite a matchup between the two strongest sides in Scotland. The other semifinals will have Hibernian versus Hearts, which is Chris Miller's team. So Chris Miller could be in the final as well. So pretty cool to have three Americans in three different teams in the Scottish Cup semifinals. CCV with Celtic, Chris Miller with Hibernian, and James Sands with Rangers. Oh yeah, and it's kind of crazy because at the time of this recording... I'm assuming Cameron Carter Vickers did not make the U.S. men's national team roster. I hope this ages poorly. And it's kind of crazy. The form he's been in the last eight months, possibly being the best center back in Scotland, being scouted and talked about going to English Premier League teams, but he hasn't gotten one opportunity for the U.S. men's national team. It's kind of crazy. And Aaron Long probably was called up by the time you're watching this. Now let's go to England and talk about Tim Ream and Anthony Robinson or Jedi from Fulham. On Tuesday, Tim Ream and Robinson started and went to full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 1-0 loss to West Brom in the English Championship. Now, DK was not with West Brom yet, but he will be available apparently and fit over the weekend. However, he's not expected to get any minutes until after international break, so essentially early April. Next up is Dwayne Holmes from Huddersfield in the English Championship. On Wednesday, Holmes started and went the full 90 minutes for Huddersfield during their 2-0 loss to Millwall. Next up are the Venezia boys, Tanner Tessman and Gianluca Busio. On Monday, Busio started and played 78 minutes for Venezia during their 1-0 loss to Lazio in the Serie A. As for Tanner Tessman, he stayed on the bench for that match, the full 90. Now, in this game, Busio did play a much more attacking role than he normally does for Venezia. Across the 78 minutes, Busio had 44 touches, 77.8% passing accuracy. He had one shot off target, one shot blocked, won four out of five ground duels, won one out of two aerial duels, and was fouled twice. Now, Matthew Hoppe from Mallorca. On Monday, Hoppe did not even make the bench for Mallorca during their 3-0 loss to Real Madrid. Uh, getting quite normal to see Hoppe not get minutes, to be honest. Last but not least, the last player I want to talk about, then I'm going to quickly talk about the CONCACAF Champions League, but before that, Alan Sonora from Independiente. On Monday, Alan Sonora started and played 76 minutes for Independiente during their 1-1 draw with Cordoba. For this match, Alan had 60 touches, 86.7% passing accuracy, one key pass, won one out of eight ground duels, which is not very good, and won two out of four aerial duels. Now, very quickly, let's skim through the CONCACAF Champions League results because I guess those are not the Americans abroad, but these are the U.S. clubs playing abroad or the MLS clubs because Montreal is from Canada. So let's go through that. And I thought MLS was finally going to win the CONCACAF Champions League. I was more optimistic after the first leg of the quarterfinals. Now I'm much more pessimistic. Thank you, Legette. Okay, so Comunicacion is defeated New York City FC. However, New York City advanced in away goals after winning 3-1 at home. New York City FC almost bottled this one, and I'll tell you right now, they are pretty much the Manchester City of the CONCACAF Champions League. They will bottle this eventually. They went through, but they ain't winning this. Sorry to 
disappoint all the New York fans. Now, Montreal had a 1-1 draw with Cruz Azul. After losing 1-0 away, they are now eliminated. Now, New England did defeat Pumas at home 3-0. And then they went down to Mexico and they lost 3-0 and lost 4-3 on PKs with Legette hitting a field goal on a penalty kick. Yes, that actually happened. And New England are now eliminated. Last but not least is the Sounders versus Club Leon. At the time of recording this, the game hasn't happened yet. Sounders did win 3-0 in the United States the first game. Now they're going to Mexico to play. I'm going to make a bold prediction and say the Sounders advance. It shouldn't be a bold prediction because they won 3-0 at home. I think they're not going to bottle it like New England. They will advance. It won't be easy. So we're going to have two MLS teams, right? New York City FC and Sounders and two Liga MX teams, right? So it's a 50-50 technically, but probably Mexico has higher odds of winning this one. With that said, I will likely be trying to do live watch-alongs for the CONCACAF Champions League semifinals. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would like us to do so. But that's it. All right. I want to thank you all very much for watching. We're back on Monday with the USMNT Abroad. Next week, we will have the full coverage of the U.S. Men's National Team Camp, a Mexico preview with two amazing, amazing guests. guests. You, guys you guys will love, love it. it. And also, we have the interview with Obed Vargas from the Seattle Sounders here at the channel, the Mexican-American 16-year-old that has been doing pretty well for the Sounders this season and is in the U.S. Men's National Team U20 camp. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button before you go. Thank you for watching and have a great day.